What's up Grizzlies fans? I'm Megan Triplett and I have some exciting news to share. We have a new app. That's right. It's a three in one experience that you don't want to miss out on. Check this out. The app will keep you up to date on all of the Grizzlies stats and latest news. If you're looking to see what events are going on at FedEx Forum, that can all be found on the app as well. Plus, if you want to see more of me and the rest of the Grind City Media team, like Chris Vernon, Lang Whitaker, and Mike Wallace, there's a section for all that. It is 365 days of content to keep you in touch with all things Grizzlies, FedEx Forum, and GCM. And did I mention you can also purchase and manage tickets on the app? The app does it all. Download it now. Acadian Ambulance is proud to be an official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum, serving the greater Memphis area with exceptional emergency and non-emergency pre-hospital care. Acadian is looking for more Grizzlies fans to join our growing team of EMTs and paramedics with opportunities in Memphis and other markets. Employee-owned, nationally recognized Acadian Ambulance Service. Learn more at memphisemsjobs.com. If you've been told that you snore loudly, making choking noises, or gasp for air while sleeping, if so, you may have obstructive sleep apnea. One in four adults in the United States has obstructive sleep apnea. If left untreated, it can cause morning headaches, daytime sleepiness, high blood pressure, heart attack, stroke, or diabetes. Call Mid-South Pulmonary and Sleep Specialist PC, the official pulmonary and sleep practice of the Memphis Grizzlies at 901-276-6507. It's a first of its kind from Toyota. The perfect blend of style, sophisticated design, and performance. Introducing the all-new 2021 Toyota Venza with advanced all-wheel drive and a hybrid powertrain as standard equipment. Now through March 1st, you can lease a Venza LE for $279 a month for 36 months with $29.99 due at signing. With approved credit through TFS, tax title and license extra. Call 1-888-36-TOYOTA for details or go to buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. I saw you tweeted about the bear. Has the, has the bear woken up? I love the sleeping bear a lot, man. Don't poke the bear. That's all I gotta say. There's a lot for Morant. Morant's got an open look at a three. Bango. Beautiful setup, John Morant. Another spectacular move to the rim by John Morant. He's going deep into his bag. He is deep into his bag. with Jessica and Megan, live on GrindCityMedia.com from the American Home Shield Studio at FedEx Forum. Now, here's your hosts, Jessica Benson and Megan Triplett. Good morning, good morning. Welcome into Rise and Grind. Megan Triplett, Jessica Benson, CJ Hurt with you for a jam-packed Thursday edition that we got going. We have guests galore. It is a Grizzlies game day. We got Mike Wallace and his Mike Check Minute. And plus, we're going to have Shaq Buchanan. It is time to talk about the Memphis hustle there in Orlando. And Megan McPeak will break down the latest from the WNBA. Yeah, we have such a busy day. Mm -hmm. And it's a long day because it is a Grizzlies game day. They are back in action tonight at FedEx Forum for the first home game since MLK Day, January 18th. It has been a minute uh, mm -hmm. But now it's time for a mic check minute. So we have Mike Wallace right off the top to help us get started for this Grizzlies game day as they welcome in the Houston Rockets tonight. Mike. Hey, thank you guys for uh, welcoming back in. It's time for another mic check minute. And I just want to say as we get ready for the Grizzlies game tonight against the Houston Rockets, it's the first home game since the MLK game uh, back on January 18th. And it seems like that's been ages ago. But as we open the doors for the games tonight, we're going to have a few more fans in in limited capacity. And I've had so many people come up to me and say, hey, I can't wait to get back into FedEx Forum. And, you know, it's been a long time coming and we definitely want to appreciate and thank all our fans for the support. And it's going to be good to see a little bit more of you each and every time we get an opportunity 
to host these home games and welcome you guys back into the arena. But I did want to point out a few people that have been special in this effort to make sure our health and safety protocols are up to standards. Dwight Johnson has done a tremendous job uh, leading the arena operations to make sure that that building is operating at the right capacity and that all the rights to health and safety protocols. Hatisha Williamson and her staff has been phenomenal as well. And I also want to give a shout out to Brett Smith and Ben Newsom and also uh, my man, Jonathan Yancey. You've never heard those names before if you're a Grizzlies fan, but they are instrumental in terms of operations and making sure everything is connected, safe, and healthy for you to come into the arena and enjoy the Grizzlies, even though it's gonna be in limited capacity. So welcome back. I'm looking forward to seeing a lot of you guys. And that's my mic check minute. Thanks so much, Mike, for that mic check minute. And you talk about having more fans into the arena and I hate to like it's kind of weird because we've gotten so used to kind of being quiet to that to the fake crowd noise but we're getting closer to that you know home court advantage that we haven't really gotten to experience but now for the players that can actually very well be a thing now it, it really could and you know we've seen around the league you know different arenas have, have made this adjustment to different levels um you know obviously it was more of a controversial type of situation in atlanta with uh, lebron james uh, and of course, side, uh, uh, Karen. Yes, getting into it. <laughs> getting She's into actually it. a Becky. I was, See, I was pointed uh, out that uh, the age groups, there's different age groups for uh, who they are. And if she really is 25, but we'll put it in quotes, but even it's like 18 yeah. to 35 is a Becky. I, I uh, like courtside Karen. LeBron does have right, a nice alliteration. Right, yeah. Yeah. yeah we see the video. Karen. Courtside Karen, courtside <laughs> Becky, courtside Keisha. You know what I mean? It's all, we hey, all don't, get all, all, the, hey. all the Keishas out here are like, no, 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 no. Don't throw my name in that group because, you know, Karen and Becky's will never be the same. Keishas are like, no, 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 we didn't ask for this. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But it's one of those deals where, you know, the, the fans and the, I mean, the players love that kind of interaction. I mean, you know, it's not, it, as long as it doesn't cross the line, and sometimes it does cross the line. Um, but, but again, for the most part, man, like I said, I, you know, I, I live downtown and I see Grizzlies fans all the time. And, and, and you know, those that recognize me and I recognize them on a regular basis um, are always like, man, I can't wait to get back into that building. And, you know, you just feel that love. I mean, watching us and listening to us on broadcast is one thing, but actually being in the environment, as long as it's safe, uh, is another thing. And look, it won't be anywhere near capacity. I mean, it's still a lot of uh, limited restrictions uh, in terms of how many people can gather. Uh, but it's good to see that, you know, you're starting to hear fans a little bit more. Indiana the other night when the Grizzlies played in Indiana, you saw and you heard and you felt the crowd. It wasn't pumped in. They were actually, you know, bodies in the seats in some areas there as well. We've seen it in football. And now it's just a, a matter of time, hopefully, as we try to get back to uh, some level of, of, of safety and normal, uh, that you're going to see more fans in, in these NBA arenas as well. Yeah, I feel like I've got to, like, bust out a nice outfit tonight. There's more people there. You can't just get away with like casually walking in. So we'll, we'll give it our best shot. Hopefully the Grizzlies uh, have an improved performance based on what we're coming off of them playing in Indiana. We saw them play their best game of the season, followed by their worst game of the season. And now they welcome in a Rockets team tonight that was also in the midst of a pretty hot winning streak of their own. They'd won six straight. They lost in Oklahoma City last night. So they will be on the second night of a back-to-back. -back. But how do you think these two teams match up? I mean, it, it tells you so much how much the schedule is impacting performances this season because, you know, a few nights ago, those same Rockets and Oklahoma City Thunder matched up and the Rockets blew them out. You know, it was a, it was a rout. And then two nights later, you know, the OKC, the Thunder blow out the Rockets. Um, you know, and, and you, you look at last night, you know, it's, it's like uh, the Indiana Pacers blow out the Grizzlies one night and then get waxed the next night <laughs> against Milwaukee. So it's almost like you, you can't, it's hard to see consistency when you're playing this many games at this much uh, of a high intensity level. But these two teams, John Wall is expected to play tonight. They won't have Victor Oladipo. So those guys are kind of being juggled in terms of back to back with both coming off of uh, injury recovery, major injury recovery. So it's just a matter of who you have available and let's get ready to roll. The Grizzlies won't be with uh, Jonas Valanciunas. He's already been ruled out. Grayson Allen as well. Uh, so it's just a matter of, okay, what kind of teams are we going to see tonight? We know what we expect to see, but these games tend to play out a lot differently. Houston shoots up a ton of threes. They don't make a lot of them. They didn't make a lot of them last night. Uh, but this is a team that's still adjusting to uh, the trade post-James Harden. So it's going to be interesting. 
Yeah, when you think about these two teams and like kind of like where they're coming from, where you have a Houston Rockets team where, you know, they've gotten a lot of new players, they got a new head coach, they're rebuilding. And then you look at our team, we have that young team, but they have that continuity from last season and you can kind of see that dynamic. So you hope the Grizzlies, they can have that advantage. And obviously the defense, defense being the key the whole entire time, as you mentioned that. They do put up a lot of threes. Sometimes they make them because they had 28 the night before against Oklahoma City. Sometimes they don't make them. But if the defense can kind of hold them to limited amount of three pointers, and maybe we'll get going too from behind the arc that we saw, you know, a couple of days ago. Yeah, and, and and you know, again, back to Houston. This is a team that plays much better with John Wall than without him. I mean, this is a winning team. Uh, I think they're like eight and two with John Wall and, and two and six without him or something like mm-hmm. that. Um, I, I don't know if he's played there that many games, but it's somewhere it's it's a drastic night and day type difference. So his ability to push tempo is going to be an interesting dynamic going up against John ja Morant, who can push tempo back the other way. So those two guys are going to set up uh, what you see on the perimeter and what you see in the paint. So it's going to be an amazing matchup, man. When I when I think about, you know, how these games are going to be played out and what teams like to get to their certain spots and what they like to do. Um, this is certainly an opportunity for the Grizzlies to get a win. They've been much better on the road than they have been at home. Uh, so hopefully they can start to turn that around. And, you know, like I said, it goes back to uh, uh, what, I, what I mentioned in the mic check minute. I mean, there are a lot of names and a lot of people behind the scenes of our team uh, that's put in a lot of work over the last year to make sure that building is safe, to make sure fans will have uh, what, how many ever fans are in there will have an enjoyable experience. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to give a shout out to, a handful of those people. When you start naming off names, you always forget or leave out some people that feel like, hey, why didn't he mention me or why didn't they point me out? There's so many people out there. I can go on for days and days mentioning some, but I definitely wanted to get to a handful that have been absolutely essential and phenomenal day in and day out uh, in that building as it relates to getting it ready. And we so appreciate all of those people who keep us safe, who keep everyone coming into FedEx Forum safe, who keep the team safe. Uh, they are truly the unsung heroes of the season. So it's always nice to give them an additional shout out. I do have to say it's hard for me to think of Memphis and Houston without thinking of last season and one of the peak moments of the year when John Morant said, tell that something something about me obviously James Harden is not there anymore but it just feels like that was just one of those jaw moments and we have a situation where John Morant is coming into tonight off of a not so great game 2 of 10 shooting against the Pacers and I know he talked about not waking a sleeping bear when the Grizzlies came back and won those two big games in the Spurs but talk about waking a sleeping jaw I certainly don't <laughs> like to face John Morant when he is coming off a situation where he hasn't played his best basketball Oh, yes. And he knows it. And, you know, in that in that post game, uh, uh, you know, scrum availability on Zoom, he mentioned it. I mean, Megan was right there and, and, and heard all of the uh, the job response. That might have even been a response to her question that she asked. But it's one of those things where, you know, listen, this guy knows he has such a level of self-awareness when it comes to, hey, I didn't do this right. He's the first one to take responsibility and to be held accountable uh, when things don't go right in terms of how the Grizzlies perform. And even when it's not his fault, he's going to say, hey, I didn't do what I need to do. So that tells you the kind of player he is. He's going to have a little bit. Well, it, it, the, the chip is on his shoulder no matter what like now. It's like it never removes. Like it, it's, it's always there. So, But he's going up against another guy in John Wall, man, who also has that massive chip on his shoulder too. Because after John Wall beat the Wizards the other night or a couple, maybe a week ago, he went on, he went on his Zoom and post game and was like, listen, I gave my heart and my all to that city for 10 years. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that franchise just gave up on me the first time that they could. And, you know, for him to have that on his shoulder, I mean, he went out and attacked that team, too. So these are two guys that always feel like they've been overlooked for some reason or another. But they're fantastic point guards when they're healthy. And I'm looking forward to a healthy matchup between both of them. When you think we speaking about John Wall, do you expect coaching to put Dylan Brooks on him? I know that they kind of made that switch uh, flip flop against the Pacers because Dylan you know, took on Malcolm Brogdon. What do you think about Dylan going up against John Wall? That's that's an interesting question right there, too, because when you look at what Houston does at the off guard position, if, if and again, they, they played uh, Victor Oladipo last night. He's expected to sit out tonight. They didn't play John Wall last night. He's expected to play tonight. So that theoretically means that they be and they may be moving in uh, Eric Gordon at the number two spot. So does John match up a little bit better with Eric Gordon or John Wall? I think you're going to have to keep the point guards on the point guards in this one. Um, Brogdon is a much bigger, stronger type point guard. John Wall is a little, you know, a little smaller, but faster. Mm-hmm. So you would think that that's going to be an interesting matchup. 
because otherwise you're going to be uh, running jaw all around screens trying to catch up uh, with Eric Gordon at the off guard spot. They also uh, are, could be getting uh, Nwamba back, uh, who's been out for a while with the injury as well. So we'll see. It's going to be interesting. Taylor is willing to mix and match up his defenses. We see him throw zones in there now, um, match up zones and all kind of defensive wrinkles. So it's going to be an interesting adjustment to see what he comes out with. And at this point in the season, none of us can get caught being like Shaq and saying we're not aware of Christian Wood's game because he continues to be very good. I am sad that we won't get the full wow experience of Wood, Oladipo, and Wall. But you do get Christian Wood. You are still without Jonas Valanciunas. This team continues to have to adjust their big man game accordingly. How do you think that goes for the front court here tonight? They got to keep these guys out of the paint. And, and you're certainly catching a break if you don't have the Wall Oladipo backcourt because those are two attacking guards. But John Wall puts so much pressure on you, you have to get back in transition defense. And that means the Grizzlies bigs have to be able to get back. That means the Grizzlies bigs have to be able to adjust and rotate uh, in defensive switches. They have to be mobile. And fortunately, Xavier Tillman has been one of the better performing bigs that we have. I mean, he's been a pleasant surprise with his defensive ability to be able to switch and adjust. That's also going to be the case with Gorgie James. So as long as Jonas is out, you're going to be relying on Gorgie James, obviously Xavier Tillman, and Brandon Clark to be mobile, to be athletic, and to be able to cover a lot of ground as they switch and cover each other defensively. So that's going to be interesting to see. DeMarcus Cousins is there. Uh, he's a guy that's going to clog up the lane. Uh, he's not as athletic or as mobile as he once was, uh, but he still is an effective physical player down low too. So. That's another wrinkle you throw into this matchup in the post for uh, for, the, for the Houston Rockets. Mm, and speaking of that front court, I mean, we saw Xavier Tillman. He had a, a tough battle when it comes to the Indiana and the Pacers. And so you, um, but you got to be still impressed by not just Xavier Tillman, but once again, that like for what our rookies have been able to do, Desmond Bain had a great night the other night, 16 points. And, you know, can they kind of continue on around, on this trend? I'm excited about what's to come tonight. It's we're back home. It, it's been a minute. It's been forever. It feels like it's been forever. And and it's an 8 o'clock game. So we Ooh. all have to get ready. <laughs> like, get your snacks in. Mike, are you on the call tonight? No, I'm not on the call tonight. It's EP on the call tonight. No, he comes on my birthday on Saturday. Oh, Mike, get ready. He <laughs> better be ready. Jessica's a birthday person, just so you know. I am. So, um, all right. This is the only, the only child in me comes out hard on my birthday. <laughs> I got I got to go shopping and I got to hit up the store real quick. <laughs> no, just your presence <laughs> is a present. <laughs> well, I hope you have in, you have fun watching the game from home. You know, what's for dinner tonight with the kids? Pizza night. Pizza night. So we're probably going to hit up Slim and Huskies or Coletta's or, you know, uh, one of our pizza spots. We got like six of them that we go to. Oh, <laughs> and so we jealous. rotate. Everyone picks a pizza night every week. We rotate. Oh, can you just drop one off here on your way back home? Because, you know, you live, <laughs> live so high. Can, I, don't, I don't know if you have the time to, like, stop to the little us little people to bring us food. A Coletta's I mean, pepperoni hey, pizza listen, sounds listen. Some of us good. don't have the options that you have. So I'm going to just leave it at that, and I'm, I'm going to go ahead and roll out and get Jessica's present ready for Saturday. Oh, amazing. Can't <laughs> wait. I'm so excited. All right. I got you. Just know it's coming. It, that text is coming. Make it one of the cookies that we've been without. If you bring me grandma's <laughs> cookies, <laughs> it's, it's over. over, right? It's, it's over. over. <laughs> All right. All thanks right, so guys. much, Mike. We'll Bye. talk to you soon. All right. <laughs> All they right. stopped bringing those cookies. You know the cookies say. we talked so glowingly about for weeks? Mm -hmm. Now they're just the prepackaged like gas station cookies. It's, it's, it's a fault. hard hit. I, I keep telling you, you, you guys, you got to be very careful about what you say on this show. We, we said nothing listening. but good things about the cookies. We praised we the did. cookies. I, actually, I have one in my we bag. We had a cookie on the show. <laughs> <laughs> I have one in my bag and pulled it out and ate it. Um, yeah, it, that, that is very true. It's, it's been a minute since, since I've had to worry about, you know, dinner, what I'm going to eat for dinner. And once again, like, as Mike was saying, you get, you show you have so much appreciation for so many people here at FedEx Forum who've done so much work. And the one thing that I, have, like, I miss tremendously is our media dining. When you get it every day, and for those who work who work down there, they're so, they're so incredibly nice. And I miss them. Like I, I, I miss that whole entire experience and just talking to them. Like sometimes they'll save me a cookie. They'll save me like the best stuff, stuff that I like. And so I can't wait for us to get back to that experience. Because we have some great people who work here at FedEx Forum. I've never even had that experience. You ever had media dining? I've never had media dining. Oh. 
No. CJ even has. But that, that's you where I met. Media I met CJ at Media Dining. Yeah. Really? Yeah. 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 Oh, that's so funny. Yeah, no. Well, when you're in local TV, like you're bringing your camera and all your mm-hmm. gear, so you just go straight up to your spot because you don't want to carry that stuff any further than you have to, and you're usually like running in from another game. And I always have my you Tupperware didn't socialize food with us because people they'll drop off their things. Jarvis will come down. Like we'll all. But we'll I was all, always like, coming from. I never had time. Mm. See, like, Jarvis lives the good life. Like, he's at the point in his life where he can appreciate media dining, as he should be able to. I'm, like, hustling from a high school game, rolling into the last second of a Grizzlies game. I get there, like, five minutes before tip, and then you're trying mm-hmm. to get back. And anyway. then half time, you get the popcorn and the chips, right? We have CJ? popcorn upstairs. Popcorn chips. chips. Yeah, upstairs, they have popcorn yeah. chips. Gummy and gummy bears. bears. Oh, okay. okay. M&M's. It was My girl M&M's Mary would always save M&M's. me gummy bears. Mary up top. She always, she had like a little secret drawer of gummy bears, and that's my, one of my favorite foods. Mm-hmm. So that's what we rolled with. Well, one, one Someday. day we'll get, back to Someday. Me, we'll get back to media dining and we we'll all eat and join in on that together. Because that's probably the first time we'll actually go out to eat See together. See you in 2022. Will be, <laughs> be that time. All right, coming up after the break, we have Memphis Hustle player Shaq Buchanan, who's going to be joining us live from Orlando. We'll be right back. Have you been told that you snore loudly, making choking noises, or gasp for air while sleeping? If so, you may have obstructive sleep apnea. One in four adults in the United States has obstructive sleep apnea. If left untreated, it can cause morning headaches, daytime sleepiness, high blood pressure, heart attack, stroke, or diabetes. Call Mid-South Pulmonary and Sleep Specialist PC, the official pulmonary and sleep practice of the Memphis Grizzlies at 901-276-6507. Acadian Ambulance is proud to be an official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum, serving the greater Memphis area with exceptional emergency and non-emergency pre-hospital care. Acadian is looking for more Grizzlies fans to join our growing team of EMTs and paramedics with opportunities in Memphis and other markets. Employee-owned, nationally recognized Acadian Ambulance Service. Learn more at memphisemsjobs.com. Have gold? Bring it to King. Grab everything you'll never wear again. King will buy all your gold jewelry or trade it for new jewelry and get 20% more. Have gemstones or diamonds you don't want to sell, sentimental items passed down to you. King can use your gems or diamonds and create a new work of art designed with your own taste and style. Trade in your gold, let King design something that's all yours or sell us your gold. There's no better time than now during gold buying and custom design days at King Furs and Fine Jewelry in Laurelwood where custom design is our specialty. In a time when preventative care is more important than ever, routine oral and eye checkups could save your life. That's why Delta Dental of Tennessee offers dental and vision plans starting at less than a dollar a day. Our large network of dentists can detect 120 signs and symptoms of diseases before they're life-threatening. Keep your health care costs low and your health at an all-time high with the power of preventive dental and vision plans from Delta Dental of Tennessee. Choose your health first. Choose Delta Dental. Need some barbecue nachos, brisket, ribs, maybe a cheese and sausage plate? The Rendezvous is now open for curbside and carryout. They also deliver through a few of the popular delivery apps. While not much changes in that alley basement, you will see a few small differences and additions. They are open from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. Tuesday through Saturday and for the first time ever, they have dessert, key lime pie tart, chocolate chest pie tarts, and so much more. Spend some time downtown and visit our friends at The Rendezvous, a family-owned restaurant in downtown Memphis Alley since 1948. And I'm thankful for this guy who said I don't have that fire in my eye no more. That game right there was for him. Moran goes wham and medically with two hands. On his head. Jaron with the jackhammer. Dylan for three. You better tweet about that. Moran with a running start. Elevate. Oh, it does. Welcome back to Rise and Grind. We are very excited to have a special guest today on the show. The G League bubble is up and running. 
The Memphis Hustle begin their season next Wednesday. And this morning we are joined by Shaq Buchanan from the bubble. Shaq, how's it going? Uh, it's going good right now. <laughs> oh, we need you to be a little bit more awake for Captain us, Shaq. You got, a, you got an extra hour over there. You're in Florida. So it's like 920. Good morning. Good morning. I'm doing good. Thank you, Shaq. We're really excited about you guys, you know, you know, tipping things off with the G League. You're in the, you know, as some people are calling it, the gubble. Uh, but what has it been like since you all have been in Orlando? Because the last time we saw the hustle, you all were, were one of the hottest team in the G League before the whole COVID pandemic break. Uh, uh, it's going good right now. Pretty sure uh, we got the routine. Just waking up every morning. Eat breakfast. Uh, go do something you want to do. I know me and Cole March been going fishing. Oh, and or we'll go practice. We go practice around one, and then after that we got COVID testing at seven. Then the rest of the day you got your, you got your day to yourself. So it's just been like that for the uh, past few days. Uh, it's just good to be back practicing with the team, though. Okay, so we saw a lot of NBA players go fishing when they were in the bubble. You're going fishing. Did you fish before, or is this something new? Oh, yeah, I, I fished before. Uh, okay. That's just something I do to get away from basketball sometimes, just to clear my mind. So you're the best fish around the team? Uh, I'll say so, yeah, because uh, <laughs> people have been asking me to take them and teach them. Some people have uh, never been, so, yeah, I'm the best one. Okay. Uh, you said it with confidence, so yeah. I believe you. I'll call you a fisherman at this point in All the right. season. <laughs> Obviously, you guys have a ton of time, and you do practice, and you are gearing up for a season. But to be in a situation like a bubble, and we've seen various leagues have to resort to that during the pandemic, how hard is it just mentally to be there? I know you're with your team, but is it difficult to be so far away and kind of locked up in one space? Uh, it's very different. Uh, just in – how they got everything so spaced out and set up. Uh, you can only be so close to other players, you know, guys you know. So you just got to talk to people from a distance, um, carry yourself the right way, make sure we're wearing our mask every day. So if you don't wear your mask, then you don't want to, you don't want the consequences. So it's going good. Uh, just playing a lot of video game teammates, uh, trying to bond, build a bond through a game and through practice. And when it comes to on the court, we got to see you right here at FedEx Forum during the preseason when you got to wear a Grizzlies jerseys. And um, we, obviously, we obviously have that special moment, moment between you and Ja. And now you have another Murray State teammate on your team. It's that Murray State connection thing going in Memphis. We, we love to see it. But for your game, what aspects are you looking at to improve on? Uh, being a leader, uh... Last year, I was a rookie and learning from the guys that were there before. Uh, this year, I learned from old guys and um, the coaching staff. So this year, I can take it and put it into the new guys and teach them what I learned. And yeah, just that mirror connection, just trying to bring the winning tradition uh, to Memphis. When you look back on those preseason minutes you got with the Grizzlies and you got a couple alley-oops with John Morant, everyone loved it from Murray State to Memphis. It's a great connection. But how much do those minutes inspire you as you go through the G League season as you try to attain the ultimate goal? Uh, I was there with them uh, during training camp, so I just watched how hard guys work, learn. Um, I was like a sponge there. So just take what I learned from those guys because we're uh, we doing the same thing they do, just uh, – recuperated with them and just showed them the right uh, right way and how the Grizzlies are winning and just bring that with the hustle. And you, as you mentioned, you've been there for a few days now and been practicing. What's a secret you can tell us about this Memphis Hustle team that fans are going to be shocked to see when you guys take the court again? Uh, it's going to be uh, we tough. Uh, we're going to get up and down, play in transition. Uh, we have an athletic team and we just have a team that's going to play hard and wants to win every night. Is there any player, I know it's always hard so early on, but is there someone who has surprised you so far in the few practices that you guys have had? Uh, I have to say Benny. Uh, he was with us last year, and um, he didn't get to play, though, because he was uh, injured. Uh, but he didn't get, uh, got in shape, um, worked on his game, and he's been doing good so far in training camp. 
All right, so yesterday was media day. You posted some of your pictures. Um, I got to say, you got some nice little moves here. Uh, you know, you're being very, like, I feel like you're being shy and timid right now. But these pictures, I mean, look at that face. Is this a, a attitude? A, I know, it yeah. is. You might have, like, a modeling contract in the near future. Oh, she called you a model. I think so. It's all about that face. It's the look. <laughs> it's in the eyes. No, that's my game face. Uh, they just, that's me locked in. You only get that face when I'm on the court or mm. or just or cameras somebody. in front of you. <laughs> That's the game face. Hold on, Robert. Can we put that second picture back up there, please? The one with him bouncing the ball, dribbling it, biting the bottom lip. You bite your bottom lip when you play <laughs> basketball. That is not your game face, dog. Stop lying to us. <laughs> they call me lacking, though. They call me lacking. <laughs> 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 okay okay <laughs> it reminds me there's like something on tiktok where like is your get your model face mm -hmm. and it's like smile raise your eyebrows close your mouth that's your model face but you add the lip bite which is yeah. a uh, really nice piece of it i know look there you go um how i know you have your girl dad and you posted mm -hmm. a picture of your daughter and to be apart from her how do you stay connected to her even while you're so far away i'll talk on the phone with her like 24 7 she just called me like, if I got free time, she'll just call me. We'll talk. Uh, she just got a, a new power wheel, a four-wheeler. So she called me, and she drove the four-wheeler all day yesterday. So I'm pretty sure she's about to get ready to call me soon when she wake up and get right back on her four-wheeler. You know, I think that I think that's like an aspect that we don't get to hear a lot of people talk about as, you know, as every, you know, for the bubble experience that the NBA got through for the summer. And then you guys now being the NBA experience is that you're away from your family and, you know, communication, how you talk, how you, you know, all that is super, super important that I know for a team, as you all spend so much time together, it's not that you're just a teammate, but you all become family because that's, that's really all you have right there in the couple. Uh, yeah, we do become a family, and that will help us on the court as well, just building that connection with each other. Uh, just know each other off the court, it will make it way easier on the court. Now, is she a Disney fan? Like, does she understand that you're at Disney World, essentially? Is she jealous? Does she want you to bring anything back? Uh, the first day I made it here, um, I showed her the Mickey Mouse bracelet we got, it, and she was like, oh, you left me. <laughs> you said you left Aww. me? I said... I couldn't bring you. She said, uh, when you come back, you got to take me to uh, Disney World so I can see Mickey Mouse. I said, all right. Oh, so yeah. I made, her, I made her a promise that after the bubble, I'll bring her back out here. Oh, yes. You, ha you definitely have. You, made, you, you made, it, made the commitment. You have a year. I feel as if, like, if you go there, they'll give you a good year. Like, you have to make it happen. Because as a kid, when my parents say, you're going to Disney World, yeah, we'll take you. And then it's like a year later, like, okay, it's been two years. Are we going to Disney World? When are we going? You promised me. I think Disney should hook you up with, like, the ultimate fast pass. Like, mm -hmm. anyone who's in the bubble should get a fast pass, and you get to the front of the line for every ride. Exactly. We need to look into that. Yeah, we'll work on it for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, Shaq, we appreciate the time. We wish you guys nothing but the best and good luck. We will be watching, and so we hope to talk to you soon. Have fun in the bubble. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> The gobble yeah. sounds too much like gobble, and I, I'm, I don't know. It's like the gobble gobble. The gobble. The gobble. <laughs> gobble. I'm excited to see the hustle back in action. Because for those who like did not get to um, partake in seeing them play last year, they were one of the hottest teams in the G League, and so it made you really, really excited for what was to come. And then we had, you know, obviously the stoppage due to the pandemic, and so you were just kind of like, ah. Oh. So hopefully they pick up and you know, the team has changed a little bit. They've made some trades and you know, have gotten some draft picks and got another, got another Murray State player. And so I, I just know Murray State usually does well with the Memphis on their chest. And so maybe that Murray State connection will continue to, uh, to be something special. Yeah, you would like to see it in the game that everyone should have circled. You should have all of them circled mm -hmm. and you can watch a lot of them. Um, but February 24th, they play the G League Ignite team. So mm -hmm. 18 teams total down there in the Gubble 7. 17 G League teams and then this new Power Ignite team. They're trying it out for the first time. That game will be on ESPN2. So that's a good one to, to go look out for. Yeah, and then we're going to have some pregame and postgame shows, right? Yep. With uh, Roser and Kelsey Wright Johnson. And I think so. our very own CJ Hurt is helping. Yeah, produce I am. Those. <laughs> I'm a hard worker. Everybody knows I come to work to work. <laughs>
Yeah. But that. we need to get some hustle merch, CJ, because like Memphis, or <laughs> Memphis, I just called you Memphis. Yeah. <laughs> Megan came flexing with a Memphis hustle shirt, and you Yay. and I <laughs> can't keep up. I thought you were like, CJ, get us some hustle merch. I was like, how am I supposed to do that? Oh, you I'm can do that. with them like that. I literally only have the, the, the free giveaway. This was a giveaway for the, it, it's was, a a, good one, it was a Grizzlies hustle night. Um, so I went down, which, t- speaking of food, the media dining for hustle games i have experienced fries. media dining yes. what they have games. media dining in next that? Yes. level and they have jump all i remember is they have jumbo size chicken tenders and candy bars yes they do they have the giant it, it's like walking into as like a child's dream you walk in there and they're like here take your pick of any jumbo mm-hmm. sized candy bar i was like that, i want to come to more hustle that games. is that is very next level it's you mean you would think you go down all you gotta do is go down to south haven you get french fries and it's like french fries as many as you want. They're crinkled cut fries. The chicken tenders are really good. The dipping sauce, you got the barbecue sauce. I always get a package of peanut M&Ms. I sometimes ask for two to keep one for later and save in my bag for a Grizzlies game. So like you gotta like, you gotta work all the media dining, you know, so things that we all miss. Things that we all miss and they have the kid zone. I got to experience the kid zone area and they sell alcohol. They have an adult zone area too for the hustle game. So one day soon we'll get to all experience that. But the games were fun. And this shirt was like a free giveaway. So I went. I like free things. Mm-hmm. Jenna says she's going to hook me up with that shirt so we can match. Okay, perfect. <laughs> we can match. So wait, wait, wait. You're getting hooked up with the shirt. Okay, well, and, and, sorry. I'm, and I'm not going to match. That's cool. That's fine. I see how it is. If you pay we, attention for a week, like Megan said, we yeah. will get Why you, you the these confetti. Things, these you know, I will, confetti. The Hustle do have the best gear. So this is the only shirt that I have, the Hustle. The, the sweatshirt that Shaq has on, it's the red. And it's like the red just pops. Like yeah. it pops and like it's the perfect cut. And I'm just evaluating other people. So like, I don't have it. I'm like, I'm, I'm like, oh, that cut is really, really great. So we you know, we'll take all of the hustle gear and like rock them all all the time. So we're cool. We're gonna it. support them. Yeah. All right. Do we want to jump straight into a off the grind, or do we break? I don't know how this works. Today. I think CJ said, jump, jump, jump into, into it. it. Megan <laughs> saw it. Jessica I did. didn't. I thought well, it was I Megan was who wasn't at, gonna see it. Oh. I was looking at the time. <laughs> t- I was looking at the times because we have we have what twenty minutes until Megan McPeak. <laughs> But yeah, we, have, we can we can talk some off the grind stuff. All right. Most importantly, the Super Bowl was almost derailed by a barber, which would have been the most not appropriate because you don't want any of that to happen. But it yeah. just would have gone with the overall vibe of this entire period of time if that's what had done it in. CJ, we've talked about the NFL not canceling a game all season, and they were never going to cancel the Super Bowl. Obviously, they would have just moved yeah. it to Wednesday. They would have moved it to Super Wednesday, <laughs> Wild Wednesday. We could have had so much fun in the Wednesday middle of the week. At, Wednesday at two seventeen would have been kickoff. Well, man, it's supposed to rain for the Super Bowl in good old Tampa, Florida. So this is what we need. they might want to find an alternate weather pattern but anyway we found out yesterday that the chiefs were very very close to having a disaster of a situation in that Mm -hmm. the barber who came with the team there were over 20 chiefs players and staffers including patrick mahomes who were scheduled to get a haircut with a barber who tested positive for covid19 the chiefs pulled the barber mid cut once his test results came in so this led to daniel kilgore Kansas City Chiefs starting center, he posted, well, he was mid-haircut. He was the one who had it. When the barber was notified that he was COVID positive, Kilgore and the barber both were wearing masks. Kilgore has to stay home this week, but is tested negative and can return Saturday, fly with the team, and play Sunday. Daniel Kilgore posted this, new (laughs) profile pic, who this, haircut looks great, never looked better. He should definitely (laughs) rock that for the Super Bowl, if knock on wood, hopefully he is all good to go and play, but this is just, it's hilarious. I mean, well, it's not funny, but it's funny. No, it is funny. But could you imagine, here's the thing, like, and, um, like, obviously they did the right move and the fact that they figured all that out right in time where it didn't have to be a thing where it's bigger. Um, later down the road as we as we get closer to the Super Bowl and closer to the Chiefs leaving on Saturday. But could you imagine like mid sewing, mid um, oh, like so literally so yes. Mid color mid mid, mid sewing. Mid, You've been there for what, like two and a half hours by <laughs> that point? <laughs> yeah. Mid or like even like a, a, a mid perm where she had just like put it, you know, you know, put that little white crack stuff on your hair and you're like, oh, it's kind of burning, but it's not burning. Oh, we got to go. No, you ain't going nowhere. You're going to have to. Somebody got this. to wash this out. Somebody's got to wash this out my head. We can't just. We're be not doing that. Mid. We're no. not doing that stuff. We're not. So ha- luckily it was the haircut because we know as women, 
It's a different There's story. There's nothing midway. Like, no, 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 no. She got a mask on. I got a mask on. Put whatever you got a shield to. Someone's got to take care of this. I could not get up from that chair. That is like my biggest like fear one day is something happens, as you know, with like migraines. And if you mm-hmm. plan different hair appointments out, like there's certain hair appointments that I can't miss. Like there, like I can't, like, you know, you don't know you, my, my stylist can't be sick and I can't be sick because if I have something planned the very next day, which usually I do, because if my hair is going to be laid, I got to go somewhere. Somebody got Somebody's to see it. Somebody got to see it. Whether it be a date, just go out to the club, to a lounge, just go to a restaurant. I have planned something. You cannot do midway. There is no taking somebody away. So that's what I thought about when I saw that. I was like, oh goodness. It's a different situation yes. when you're a dude and can just, did we get a haircut? Did you not get a haircut? <laughs> yeah. Who knows? Who cares? No one probably noticed. It's probably like, what? All right. Missed a spot on the back end? Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, all is well. They will still go on to, well, at this point, I don't want to mm-hmm. jinx it into something that it's not, but at this point they will play the Super Bowl yeah. on Super Bowl Sunday. What are you doing for Super Bowl Sunday? I, I guess we can talk about this probably tomorrow, just wa- but. watch it at home with my dad. Like that's, I mean, maybe I'll get some, fring- most, most likely I will get some French fries from some, some establishment, but it's not going to be the same. I prefer to watch Super Bowl at home, like by myself. I'm yeah. not a big Super Bowl party person because I like to literally like really pay attention. I don't like a lot of like noise and mm. certain groups that you might be in aren't as interested in. I love to hear the broadcast team. I don't like when there's so much noise around. So I prefer, like I have turned down several Super Bowl parties. I like to just be by myself, pick up my food. I think last year it was five guys. This year I have no idea what it's going to be. And then, like, chill. Because people don't know how to act. I don't want to talk to you yeah. when the Super Bowl is yeah. on at all. Don't talk to me during the game. Don't talk to me during the com- – God, don't talk to me during the commercial breaks, people. Mm-hmm. I'm sitting down to watch this. Don't talk to me during the halftime show. Don't talk to me during the post game. You want to talk to me about the Super Bowl, holla at me on Monday. That's when we can talk. But during the game, don't talk to me from, what, 4.30 – Till 9, 30, 10 o'clock. I don't want to hear from you. That's actually why it is nice. I've worked every Super Bowl Sunday except for when the Broncos won in 2016. I took that one off and went to a Super Bowl party and watched it. Um, but working it, like, you're by yourself. You're just watching it. You can get your favorite food. Yeah. You have to go do a sports cast at some point. But, like, nobody's watching. If, if someone likes sports, they are not watching you at the moment mm-hmm. that you're doing a two-minute sports cast during the Super Bowl. So you kind of just are like... I'm just gonna do the bare minimum as much as humanly possible and usually like other sports are trying not to schedule games I mean, oh, yeah. sometimes you get the occasional random one-off but for the most part it is a day dedicated to the super bowl it is fun we ended up we got sucked into watching like best of commercials yes. they had something oh, on yes. cbs last night and it was just, i mean I, some of the doritos commercials from the last 10 15 years yeah. are so funny i've got a super bowl playlist that I will be playing when I wake up in the morning, like six, seven o'clock. And it's a couple of games, but mostly it's commercials. <laughs> These Super Bowl commercials are great. And uh, Budweiser's not doing a commercial. And who else isn't doing a commercial this year? It's somebody big. Is it Budweiser and Doritos that aren't doing commercials? Uh, no, Coke and Coke. Uh, Doritos is doing one because they gave a preview of it last night. And it's Ashton that- Kutcher and Mila Kunis and Shaggy. And it's a whole like, wasn't me situation. Um, of like Think about that. We get, we get preview Super Bowl commercials. That's how big commercials are during Super yeah. Bowl Sunday because they're great. Yeah. I love it. The office linebacker. Remember that guy yep. running around clobbering Puppy folks? monkey baby. Oh. The creepiest thing your eyes ever did see haunts your dreams. I will say for it for this year, and maybe I can, I'll can. i send it to our director to see if we can pull it up so we don't give everything away. But have you seen the Michael B. Jordan Alexa? Yes. That, so far, and I don't know why they kind of like put things already out there. But I'm already looking forward to seeing it, but I've mm-hmm. already seen it. And, and Uber, or maybe there's more. Uber's doing it. Wayne's World. Mm-hmm. They like did a little preview of it on um, coming out of SNL. It was super weird watching on SNL because you thought it was an SNL skit and that mm-hmm. they were bringing back those two. And then it was like, We'll see you on Super Bowl Sunday, which was on another network, so it was kind of weird. But yeah, the Michael B. Jordan one has it been is really good. Great. I'm going to send it to our, our uh, director to see if we can put it up later in Double Tap or not, because this one is Michael B. Jordan. I know I'm kind of a little like a feeling a different type of way right now because of Lori Harvey, that whole relationship and what they've been parading around Instagram. But whew, Michael B. Jordan, man. That voice is special. The more commercials with Michael B. Jordan, yeah. the better. Yeah, frankly. he reminded me. Okay, I get it, Michael. 
you are it you are it all right when we come back we're gonna have cj's corner and we're gonna talk to megan mcpeak and get you some of the latest in the WNBA. it's a lot of movement going on so we need to get someone who is a pro and who is amazing at this to break it all down for us she knows everything mm -hmm. we'll be right back Have you been told that you snore loudly, making choking noises, or gasp for air while sleeping? If so, you may have obstructive sleep apnea. One in four adults in the United States has obstructive sleep apnea. If left untreated, it can cause morning headaches, daytime sleepiness, high blood pressure, heart attack, stroke, or diabetes. Call Mid-South Pulmonary and Sleep Specialist PC, the official pulmonary and sleep practice of the Memphis Grizzlies at 901-276-6507. In a time when preventative care is more important than ever, routine oral and eye checkups could save your life. That's why Delta Dental of Tennessee offers dental and vision plans starting at less than a dollar a day. Our large network of dentists can detect 120 signs and symptoms of diseases before they're life-threatening. Keep your health care costs low and your health at an all-time high with the power of preventive dental and vision plans from Delta Dental of Tennessee. Choose your health first. Choose Delta Dental. It's a first of its kind from Toyota. The perfect blend of style, sophisticated design, and performance. Introducing the all-new 2021 Toyota Venza with advanced all-wheel drive and a hybrid powertrain as standard equipment. Now you can lease a Venza LE for $279 a month for 36 months with $29.99 due at signing. With approved credit through TFS, tax title and license extra. Call 1-888-36-TOYOTA for details or go to buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. What's up, everybody? Let's catch you up on some sports stories you may have missed. The first day of the final signing period for football recruits in the class of 2021 was yesterday. Alabama finished the day with the top class, not just of this year, but of all time, snagging 13 top 100 prospects and 22 top 300 athletes. Here in Memphis, the hometown, Tigers completed the highest ranked recruiting class in the program's history. They signed 15 recruits in December and added three-star wideout Rock Taylor, who had his scholarship pulled by Tennessee. Memphis signed 20 players for this class and was the second highest ranked class in the group of five behind Cincinnati, who currently sits at 42. Here's what the SEC recruiting rankings look like right now. Bama is one, of course, followed by Georgia, LSU, Texas A&M. Florida, Tennessee, Ole Miss, Arkansas, Mississippi State, Missouri, Kentucky, Auburn, Vandy, and South Carolina. We got more fun coming your way next. Megan McPeak joins the show to talk WNBA free agency. Acadian Ambulance is proud to be an official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum, serving the greater Memphis area with exceptional emergency and non-emergency pre-hospital care. Acadian is looking for more Grizzlies fans to join our growing team of EMTs and paramedics with opportunities in Memphis and other markets. Employee-owned, nationally recognized Acadian Ambulance Service. Learn more at memphisemsjobs.com. Need some barbecue nachos, brisket, ribs, maybe a cheese and sausage plate? The Rendezvous is now open for curbside and carryout. They also deliver through a few of the popular delivery apps. While not much changes in that alley basement, you will see a few small differences and additions. They are open from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. Tuesday through Saturday. And for the first time ever, they have dessert, key lime pie tart, chocolate chest pie tarts, and so much more. Spend some time downtown and visit our friends at The Rendezvous, a family-owned restaurant in downtown Memphis Alley since 1948. The two plays for me in college football that have stood out the most this year are that catch by Devontae Smith against LSU in the back of the end zone, and then that throw by Justin Fields to Chris Olave, 63 yards in the air, just on a dime at the goal line, hit him in perfect stride. I'll never forget that throw. I'll never forget the Abilene Christian Virginia finish. <laughs> <laughs> Get your sports betting picks and trends with Lang Whitaker and Rob Fisher, The Odds Couple. Fridays on GrindCityMedia.com and YouTube.
Welcome back to Rise and Grind. As Megan said before the break, our next guest mm-hmm. knows everything, does everything. It's not like we hype her up too much, but like she literally does just about everything. It is Megan McPeak. It has been far too important. long. Oh, we are now accidentally oh, showing oh. a clip of Candace Parker, so we're going to get back to Megan McPeak there because we're going to get into that. <laughs> That's one of the many things we'll talk about, but Megan, how's it going? I am doing well, ladies. Jess, Megan, how you guys doing? You guys hype me up way too much. Oh, you set the bar way too high. You hype for yourself, your, uh, viewers, like Mm-mm. by your actions. Because you know, here, here's a here's a great thing about you know. Yesterday was National Girls and Women in Sports Day, and here's the great thing about when you have like sisters in this game. Just when you think that you don't need the hype. You got someone behind you that's like, nah, girl, <laughs> nah, girl, you got this. Like, w- you can do it. You the bomb. You bomb.com. Come on. Yeah, the bomb. bomb. Is, it 90, bomb. is it 1998? <laughs> what? We, are, are people still the bomb? Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. You, I hope yes. when I walk in the room, you think that. Mm-hmm. Yes, absolutely. And yesterday, <laughs> that was, I mean, I didn't even know it was National I Girls know. and Women in Sports Day. And then we get off the show and suddenly it was wonderful to see so much love across yeah. the entirety of the industry. Love that should be each and every day, not just one day a year. Just saying. Mm-hmm. But we have a lot of love for you. I know we have a lot of WNBA to get to. We will start with what I think is the biggest thing that happened, which is the news that Candace Parker is leaving the sparks going home to Chicago. That was just one of those moments where when it crossed your timeline, I think all of us collectively were like, wait, what? Really? So going back to that, what was your reaction when you saw that news? Um, well, I, I had a little inside info on that. So I kind of knew. It was- <laughs> oh, okay. Not and you like wonder why we hype like you Candace up or anything. Um, but you know, just you make connections in this business and you kind of hear it through the grapevine. So it was, uh, not shocking to me. And I, you know what, even if I didn't have that info, I think it wouldn't have shocked me either because she spent her entirety in LA and she did what she wanted to do. She wanted to bring the championship and she, she did that. Um, she, she wanted to set a tone in that organization, that franchise, and she did that. And, you know, that clip, I, I actually saw it, um, the other day and I was watching it live when she was talking about, you know, making the decision and everything and everything that went into it, you know, I 100% support her. And she, she went there with a plan. She went there with, you know, a, a business and a business decision to do. And she went there to start something and finish something. And in her own words, she she finished what she wanted to do and she finished what she wanted to accomplish there and she felt that this was the time to do what she needed to do and she was an unrestricted free agent so that means that as we all know she has the ability to make the business decision that she wanted to and she did what was best for herself um and her family and now she's getting the opportunity to play in front of her family and friends back home in chicago and you know any athlete will tell you that's you know that's a goal that they want to do and if they don't tell you that it may it makes you kind of wonder like I don't think I've spoken to an athlete um, across many sports that wouldn't want to play in front of their family and friends night in and night out so it didn't really surprise me Um, it wouldn't have surprised me had I not kind of had an inkling that this was going to happen and I mean we knew before actual contracts and everything could happen because of you know social media so I wasn't shocked. I'm happy for her. This is what free agents are supposed to do. You're supposed to be able to go where you want. You're not a commodity. These are human beings, and this is their job. They can go where they want. Yeah, and Megan, you teased it for a little bit, what Candace said on Inside the NBA with the, with the TNT guys. For those who didn't uh, watch it and missed it, take a listen to what Candace, in her own words, of why it was important for her to go back to Chicago. I think it's important. I mean, we've seen what CBA, uh, the new CBAs have done for player empowerment. We've seen what guys like LeBron James leaving Cleveland and going to Miami, how that ripple effect has affected the NBA, but also has gone into the WNBA. And for me, I think I was, gr- I gr- I was brought up where you finish what you start. And I'm not the type of person that's going to demand a trade. Um, and I did. I finished what I started and being an unrestricted agent is doing what you want to. Mm. And I think they look at athletes as not human beings in terms of working, having a career, it is a job. And so if you're a manager somewhere in California and you, want, you have an opportunity to go closer to home, would you take it? And for me, it was yes. And to be able to see my grandma and her face mm. when she saw that I was coming home, I mean, I think that just 
my mom, my dad, everyone. Layla's excited. She told me she's not wearing a, the Chicago Sky jersey for only one game. She's going to wear the L.A. Sparks game during that game. So wow. she's, she's an L.A. kid, which is still going to be home. Yeah. But, um, you know, I just appreciate the support from everybody here. And, you know, I've talked to all of you all, and um, it's tough, but I think it was, it was a good decision. I mean, Megan, you said it like I think, you know, for for players and for everyone coming back home means something. You know, if someone doesn't say it does, you 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 know, it does like, you know, I've come back home and, and before I was like, oh, no, I'm good. Like when you get here, you're just like, you know, what? it's it means something to be able to call your grandmother or see your grandmother, see your parents. And her daughter kept it real with her like, OK, now you from Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make sure you know that I'm from L.A. <laughs> Can we also take a moment for the fedora, though? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Through Candace, yes. Through CP3 with the fedora. Oh, um, but good. no, like it's it, nope. it's the big thing is like like look at that that like that is greatness. That is greatness right there. Uh, but it's it's true what she said about you know being human. They're, these athletes are still human. They're allowed to make decisions, and it. She used a great example. Like if you are working in a company, if you're in tech and you're in San Francisco working, and you have an opportunity, if you're from New York, to go back home to New York, do the same job, maybe make a little bit more money, be around your family and friends all the time, you're probably gonna make that decision 10 out of 11, 10 or 10 out of 10 times, excuse me. Like that, that, it, that's simple. Like if you can go home, why not go home? Uh, but I love that Layla's like, you get, you get me in the jersey one time and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's honest. and mm -hmm. But it is. It's just so nice to hear. I mean, the grandma comment just hits a different kind of way because, mm -hmm. like you said, when it's not just a matter of calling, you can go see your grandma. And this year has put all of that in perspective even more so for all of us. She also talked about, you know, finishing one chapter, moving on to the next. You now have a Sky team that is really good. Diamond to Shields, Courtney Vandersloot, Gabby Williams. Just how does this elevate what the Sky are trying to do? I think uh, coming off of the last two seasons that they had, uh, the season prior to the, the Wubble season, as they deemed it, and then going into the Wubble season, I think they've continuously made progress. And now you add in a free agent and a, a, a legend of the game of her caliber, one of the best defensive players that this league has ever seen, one of the best centers that this league has ever seen, you automatically now put yourself in contention for a championship. And they were already in that conversation uh, going into this season. Now you've added Candace Parker. You automatically elevate yourself. And just with every single move, ladies, that, that this season, this free agency season has seen, this 2021 WNBA season is going to be a straight up dog fight. And I am so excited to see it because in all honesty, you can pick a contender at the beginning of the season, but there's a very good chance that they might not even be in the championship game at the end of the year. So it is literally a toss up with the moves that we have seen across the board. Okay, so let's talk about some more moves. And we talk about one legend in Candace Parker. Let's talk about another legend, Diana Taurasi. I remember you coming on the show during the Wubble experience when the Mercury got out and you said, I just want, I want to see more of Diana Taurasi. Well, we are going to get a chance to see more of Diana Taurasi. Her 16 year, 16 year career will continue with the Phoenix Mercury. Um, I just saw your face. So, you know, expand on that reaction of how excited you are to see her kind of continue her obviously her history i think i mean nobody was surprised when it was announced that she would be staying and resigning with the phoenix mercury i think the entire state of arizona took a collective breath on that one <laughs> um so the fans in phoenix can can sleep happily at nighttime but i you know what i mean when you look at diana tarasi and the legendary career she's had not only at the professional level with the w but overseas as well too in the ncaa also as an Olympian, like I think the only thing she wants to do is try and get one more championship, one more championship and one more gold medal. And I think that this, with it being not only a WNBA season, but as well too, uh, with the hopes of the Olympics happening in Tokyo, I would not be surprised if she tries to go for the double double. Let me get a WNBA title and an mm -hmm. Olympic gold medal and ride off into the sunset. <laughs> like how amazing of a retirement would that be? I'm not, I'm not saying that's what's going to happen, but that would be probably one for the history books um, and one for, you know, a movie. But it, I'm not going to be surprised if this is the final season we see her in the WNBA. 
However, at the same time, I've also learned not to get not to bet against Diana Taurasi retiring. So I will take every extra season of Diana Taurasi that we can get. Extra seasons of Diana Taurasi, extra seasons of Sue Bird. She is yeah. expected to re-up in Seattle. You talk about two legends, two women playing. This is a week going into the Super Bowl. All the talk is about Tom Brady playing until he's 43. Sue Bird, 40 years old. Diana Taurasi, 38. Not to like point out their ages, but it's incredible that they continue to do this. I thought Gino Ariema had a really good quote about it earlier this week. He said, if Diana Taurasi and Sue Bird didn't think they could help win a championship and be big, big factors in winning that championship, they wouldn't be playing right now. They have too much pride in themselves, too much respect for the game. Just what does it say about them both collectively that they still can contribute this late in their careers. It, it points to what they do to take care of themselves uh, off the floor when they're not in season and the, the pride that they take in making sure that they're a hundred percent healthy going into each season and making sure that they're playing at the best of their ability, both mentally and physically. And I think a lot of people, you know, talk about what LeBron does with his body and how much money he invests into it. And these women are exactly the same. They invest a lot. You know, a lot of talk has been um, in the last couple of years about what uh, Sue Bird has done, the way she's changed her diet. Diana Taurasi has done the same thing with changing the way that she eats. But as well, too, it's not just what you're putting in your body. It's how you're also taking care of it. And these two women have, have done everything they need to do in order to take care of their body as much as they can. And that's even with dealing with injuries that they've both um, sustained. Obviously, we know the, the knees have not been favorable to Sue Bird. And we know the back has not been favorable, favorable to Diana Taurasi. And yet they both continue to fight back, to get back healthy, to play at a high level. And I think last season in the Wubble, we saw Sue Bird playing at a very high level, even dealing with injuries. Excuse me. Um, so I, I, it does not surprise me that um, they're taking care of their bodies. And that quote from Gino Oriema, I mean, if anybody knows how well these two women play the game and, and respect the game, it's, it's going to be him because he coached them at UConn. And I think he also, you know, stems on being the Olympic coach as well, too, and knowing the pride that they have and respect for the game. So it's not shocking that they're still playing at a high level. And he's right. If they could not play and feel that they could not contribute to actually make a championship push, I suspect that they would have retired by now and they haven't. So I'm I'm excited to see what they bring for <laughs> this next season. Oh, man, it's just like a couple of months away. I know there's still questions, but this whole free agency period has made, I feel like, a lot of people excited for what's to come. And we got to talk about your Washington Mystics. You had some free agents as well, and you added a big-time get where because you, you're just – one year removed from winning the WNBA finals and the championship. And now you add the 2020 defensive player. You're adding Alicia Clark into this mix of it all. How excited are you about her joining this team and what does she bring to this group? Well, Megan and Jess first, you know, huge respect to Ariel powers and what she brought to this franchise in her tenure here uh, in DC. She helped them bring a title and she brought that defensive prowess and that bulldog mentality. She's on her way now to Minnesota. Uh, to join that team and I wish her well and you know DZ fans wish her well as well too but within her leaving we gained a champion <laughs> and as you mentioned one of the best defenders that this league has seen and she also too and Alicia Clark she can put the ball in the hoop let's not get it twisted she was a very prolific scorer in her college days so although she hasn't seen those prolific scoring consistencies in her time in the WNBA because she's been such a great defender she can put the ball in the hoop so you do have to respect her on both ends of the floor so you add a player like that to the mix and then if all goes well you return a Natasha Cloud an Elena Deladon uh, Tina Charles is still a free agent that they're hoping to bring back um, as well too Latoya Sanders was just announced that she will be returning Tiana Hawkins is another free agent that they're working on trying to hope to bring her back so when you think about the fact you're now adding in a championship defensive mentality from Alicia Clark into a mix where as you mentioned a year removed from winning the WNBA title the last three champions in the WNBA title have either been the Washington Mystics or the Seattle Storm mm. two for the Storm one for the Mystics and now you're bringing in that championship defensive mentality in Alicia Clark, who was the team that beat you the year before you won the title. Um, so I think much like Candace Parker being added to the Chicago Sky, if you can return all the players that you're hoping to, if you're Mike Tebow and, and the front office staff for the Mystics, and now you add in Alicia Clark, it puts you right back in the mix for that championship run. And you could now see, you know, who knows? You could see four, four titles 
in four years between the Mystics and the Storm. And in all honesty, I want to see a rematch of that 2018 title with both teams at full strength and full health. Because I think every WNBA, and let's be real, every basketball fan was robbed in 2018 because the Mystics were not at 100% full strength, although the Storm were. I want to see that rematch 100% of the time. And Megan, just really quickly, oh, there, that's a Tennessee connection for, I think sometimes people forget that Alicia Clark, she is went to high school in Nashville. She went to Belmont. She went to MTSU. So now we have a Washington Mystics player. Megan, so you will come on the show more to talk about some of our Tennessee talent. Just going to make sure you know that, okay? Got it. Got it. <laughs> Anytime you guys want me on to talk WNBA or anything, just let me know. But, like, insane free agency. And the crazy thing is, ladies, it's not even done yet. Oh, my god! I gosh. know Devin is I know Devin is dying to ask me and wondering what's going on with Maya Moore. <laughs> Devin, I'm sorry. We don't know yet. We're, we got to wait to find out. That's one person we're still waiting on. <laughs> I hate to break it to you. Don't tell her. I'll be Devin. We now have CJ. But Devin's watching. Devin was probably watching. <laughs> mm-hmm. But see, we got CJ in his but corner. On, but on ch- champion's corner. Champion's, champions corner. Champion's corner, me. man. Um, <laughs> On the topic of the Lynx, they go out there and grab Kayla McBride. And yes. even without Maya Moore, this Lynx team, with all that they've added mm-hmm. in free agency, coupled with Sylvia Fowles, they, they've got to be a legit contender for the WNBA crown. Or am I tripping? <laughs> you're, you're not tripping at all. Not at all. Like that's, but that's what I'm saying with the movement that we've seen. You see Kayla McBride leave, uh, leave Las Vegas, but then they add Chelsea Gray. The oh. point God, mm-hmm. let's be real. Call it what it is. They add her in. So now you have her dishing the ball to Asia Wilson, Liz Cambage, and Kelsey Plum returning off an wow. Achilles injury. Like, this season is going to be absolutely insane. And yes, you're, you're, you are correct. That does put the Minnesota Lynx back in the dynasty contention for another title. I'm so excited for this season, ladies and gents. Whew. It's like it's all over the place. Yeah. I mean, truly, the and like you said, it's not over. <laughs> like, it's it's going to be right. I'm going to need a chart. I'm also wondering. Was it Devin or CJ that was waiting on the Sabrina and New Jersey? And did they no, get it? Devin, De- Devin, Devin was waiting on the Sabrina and okay. New Jersey. Yeah, that is very true. Yeah. So, okay, so I know you said it's not over just yet, but if you take a look, let's look at February 4th at 9.02 a.m., who wins the free agency? Ooh. Wow, that's a tough one. Um, There's so honestly, much to choose from. There, there's so much to choose from. I'm, I'm, I'm going to give it to WNBA fans mm. because you can't go – whichever team you want to watch, you can't go wrong. Like, as I just said, Candace Parker to Chicago with the Vanderquakes. Then you have Alicia Clark in D.C., but you're returning, hopefully, Elena Deladon. You're trying to get Tina Charles and, and that three-headed mo- monster, along with Emma Miesemann, hopefully, as well, too. But then you have Chelsea Gray to Las Vegas and a return of Kelsey Plum. Sue Bird's staying. Diana Taurasi's sticking – like – if you're a W, if you're, no, I'm not even going to categorize it. If you're a mm-hmm. basketball fan, you need yeah. to be paying attention to the WNBA this season. Point blank, period. Point blank, you period. Said it. I mean, it sums Drop it up. I did want to say that we really appreciate the fact that you still have a Christmas tree up yeah. because we are team. <laughs> Wait, where do you see I it? Still, it was in the corner. She's it's moved the left a little corner. bit. The, the oh. to go to the left a little I didn't bit. even see it. Other way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Other, there we go. <laughs> Y'all didn't see the shoe on it. Oh, oh, nice! A shoe better. ornament. We That's all have. Smart. I still have mine up. Do you guys still have I yours still up? We still have no. ours up too. Yep. We still have ours so. up. We all in this together. The way 2020 and 2021 have yes. gone and started. You need some sort of happiness and joy. Well, you have brought us some happiness and joy just in this morning and just breaking everything down. So when more stuff movement happens, you know, can you come back on and please like educate us on, I can't keep up. So I'm going to need a board or chart. Maybe we'll have like a graph next time as you, as you all say them all so we can connect the dots. Like you're Jessica's big board. I'll work on it. You'll work. You'll, yeah. Oh gosh. Yeah. She loves crafts I'll, and projects. I'll try and, I'll try and get really good at, at, uh, at John King's uh, magic wall. <laughs> yes. I'm not gonna be you are our John try. King. <gasps> you are our Kornacki. Oh, this is amazing. This is perfect. This we is won't perfect. make you wear khakis. We'll, we'll let you keep doing you. <laughs> <laughs> Megan, like always, thank you so much. We appreciate the time. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks, everyone. Bye. <laughs> I did not know about the Chelsea Gray to uh, yeah. the Aces. We were just talking Sparks about her when I said that two. that was a Sparks, like I thought, was a super team. Mm-hmm. Chelsea Gray from Duke. She was like just phenomenal. Um, 
it's a lot going on. Like yeah. and the fact that it's not over, and I, I, like I even pulled up WNBA free agency, and there's still stuff being report, obviously reportedly, reportedly. So you're like waiting for the official, you know, official papers to be signed. But social media tells you things before it happens. But you're like, is it going to happen? Could it change? It, you know, I'm but, just all about the power of the athlete, the power yeah. of the person. Like, you want to go someplace? That place wants you. Make yeah. it happen. Don't have things hold that back. Like mm-hmm. that is one of the best evolutions that we've seen in the last you know, yeah. couple of years. I think I know that, that that's like a huge debate always, mm-hmm. um, especially as of like right now when, when you're a free agent, you know, I'm like, people are all for it. And then as you've seen with the James Harden, Deshaun Watson, uh, what, how that's kind of like transpired. I know there's a, there's always a, a conversation and people are very critical about how times have changed yeah. when we get, um, D'Angelo back on. I want to know his opinion on the kind, on kind of, you know, obviously as a former player sitting back and you see that with social media, you have a lot of more power too. You can kind of put your voice out there a little bit more. You don't have to call someone. You don't have to, you don't have to call a reporter to say, hey, do this story. You can be like, mm, I'm going to hit click, click, enter, whatever. I do wonder what D'Angelo thinks. Like, how does it feel for you? Like looking back on, you know, looking back now in the future of saying, huh, I wish we had that, but I am happy about it. And the NFL feels a little like it's a little more up and down in that matter. I mean, obviously we're seeing the Deshaun Watson situation play out and here you can have someone who is removed them from his social media handles. That's when you know it's real. And yet they're still trying to fight for him to stay. You want to get, if you're the ownership of the Texans, you want to make sure you get what you deserve for it. But then I thought it was really cool. Even with the Matt Stafford news, like Mm -hmm. the Rams were his, you know, number one destination and they made it work. They had offers yeah. from other teams and obviously the Rams sent the lines back what they needed to make it make sense for them. But it's always nice when you can have someone be happy. Don't we all yeah. just want happiness? It's like kind of, why do people fight against it so much? It's kind of just kind of like what Mike Conley did. And when, mm-hmm. when, when Mike Conley left, he said he wanted to make sure that the Grizzlies were going to get a good situation. Yep. Like he didn't want to leave because when you do love your organization, when you love, you know, your owners and you love your coaches and the GM, you know, just because your time has, you know, surpassed and there's certain jobs that we've left. Like I, I like this job, but I have to move on, mm-hmm. but I want to make sure, can I help you find my replacement? Can I be a part of the interview process? Hey, let me send you some resumes that can like, I think will be great. I, so when you, when you, when that all happens, it just shows you that you're leaving on a good note. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, not only is your, d- does your new team want you and you want to go there, but your, your old team respects you enough to say, where would you like to go for you and your family? What's best for you? I don't want to just send you somewhere that's not going to work well with your situation. And I think the Lions turned down a better package from the Panthers to send them to LA, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. On the topic of uh, Deshaun Watson and player empowerment, we've, we've seen players, they find a way to get out of situations, be it uh, Brett Favre in Green Bay, remember how he tried to force his way out and did force his way out, and they were, he wanted to go to the Vikings. The Packers were like, no, forget you. We're not going to send you there. We'll send you to the Jets for that year. And then Brett Favre found a way back to Minnesota where he really wanted to be. But players have found malcontents in locker rooms are things you don't want a lot of. So if you're in there sulking and, and giving information to reporters about the, the locker room and about the front office and stuff like that. That is the way that they found to force uh, themselves out of situations they don't, didn't want to be in before social media. Also, today is the start of Team USA women's basketball training camp. Mm-hmm. And it goes from the 4th through the 7th. Asia Wilson them be down there balling. Oh, of course man. you will. Yeah. <laughs> of course you will. <laughs> All right. Let's do a little pop of the morning. Yeah. Let us do it. Where is our graphic? Where is our pop of the morning graphic? G- DJ Megan, can, can you give us a can second? Pop Good grief. Of the morning. I do miss the, like, the pop. I miss the, like, our, I know Me we too. can't use that song anymore, but I, I actually really miss that pop of the morning song that you did, CJ. So it made my little NSYNC yeah. heart happy. Every <laughs> I miss it too. I can, I can do one. No, it's okay. No. I'm okay. No, no, no. We're good. I'm okay. Let's I'm get good. to some Golden Glows. We teased it a little bit yesterday when it comes to the host, but the like, official nominations are out. We've, we've taken a chance to look over it. I know, Jessica, you were very upset. I'll say the one thing I'm happy about before we get to okay. be upset about. I'm happy about for the, the director category, we have three women. Yes. Um, and so that is very big for the three out of the five. So that means something because as we all know, we've had that issue when it comes to um, the, the director category. Regina King is, is nominated. Um, so 
happy to see that. Now, what are you upset about when it comes to this? Everything. <laughs> Besides director category. <laughs> but yeah, shout okay. out Regina King. And Leslie Odom Jr. got nominated for One Night in Miami. But he is the only actor who got nominated for One Night in Miami. And oh, honestly, I think all should've. four of them could have. But at least two of them should have. And Leslie Odom Jr., fantastic. Um, the guy who played... Malcolm X, whose name always escapes me. I'm so sorry. Um, but he was fantastic, too. Anyway, a reminder to everyone that the Golden Globes are terrible. And I always forget this, but they make me so angry year in and year out because this is nothing new. This is what the Golden Globes do. It doesn't necessarily indicate what's going to happen at the Academy Awards or other awards throughout the season. But when you have the Hollywood Foreign Press, which is a kind of like mythical group of small group really of foreign reporters who are really interested in getting like the biggest stars available for the night mm -hmm. even though you're not going to have a classic award show like setting and they're interested in money and that's cool like you do you um, but a lot of this didn't make sense and I guess snub wise the biggest snub of all is there's a show on HBO called I May Destroy You by Michaela Cole it was one of the most powerful interesting important things that I watched on TV this entire year completely shut out nothing mm -hmm. that is a travesty like it is one of the most important pieces of art on trauma on sexual assault on the female experience it is a black woman who does it and the way that she tells the story is so good it's based loosely on a the true story of her own life it's about a writer going through the experience and i mean it's not like i'm sitting here saying this alone like this is a very wide believed show that deserved more than it got yesterday even the, the creator of emily in paris even came out and said she was upset about it and like i know that they would be in two different categories but the fact that emily in paris got nominated for a golden globe and i may destroy you did not mm -hmm. is everything that's wrong yeah. with the golden globes i no to to i i listened to the um one of the editors at rotten tomatoes talked about that and she said that as shocking as it is she was like the way the golden globes are done She's like, with a show like that, usually it takes the second season to get their eyes on it. It does not make it right or anything because it was a great show. But she said that maybe just maybe she's like, I wasn't shocked just because if you look at the history's past of the Golden Globes, second season should be their year where they should get nominated. But but you are right because Emily and Paris was Emily in season. Emily and Perry, Robbie just corrected me. <laughs> I'm going to say Emily and Paris, <laughs> but I know that is so true. I think it is... I. I'm still flabbergasted, especially when you look at the lineup of who she's going against in that in, in that in, in that category. You're just like, we watch the show. It's a cute show. It's not something to like it's rave not about. An it's not show. right. It's not Lily Collins didn't go outside of herself. It wasn't as if she was like challenged. I don't think to play that character. Um, so, and then it also got a lot of you know crit you know critics about saying, was this really that good? There wasn't that much diversity in, in the show. And truthfully, we could we could very well be done with it um, after this season. I don't need a season two. It's a cute show that you just like need something to do. Like you're just trying to take up space, and it, it just flows very well. But I was shocked to see that that people like that it got nominated. And the editor also said that she's like, when you look at the Golden Globes. Um, they do try to share the love, and she said like, it doesn't make it right. No, because they, what they, what they're looking at, even for shows, is there's so many now of uh, the streaming services that's getting nominated that, that they had to find something to get like linearly. Who can we nominate when it comes to TV? Because obviously times have changed. We're we're all just streaming these type of TV shows and different movies. And some people thought Bridgerton should have been nominated because there wasn't a cutoff date. <laughs> should that have? <laughs> I, I was like, I don't think I don't think I needed. I don't think anyone's performance was like. Oh, this should be right. I Got think it, um, the main character. She was good. I think but she like, was again not a war. But if Lily Collins, that, am I, that's if the you're thing using that, like, that then I'm like, okay, Bridgerton should be nominated. Yes, that it's just really frustrating, and you really do have to call it like you see it in this case, and it reminds me so much of other entities within this world, like the Grammys and the NFL, mm -hmm. and the conversation around black lives matter and increasing diversity within all of the various industries and just like the nfl painting black lives matter on a football field and then having a off-season coaching search of seven open jobs and only one of them going to a black coach and the entire eric b situation how that's played out it reminds me a lot of that because you can talk the talk but until you walk the walk like this golden globes 
made it so apparent. The Five Bloods, uh, Spike Lee's movie, completely snubbed out. His kids are ambassadors for the Golden Globes this year. And it's not like it's considered one of Spike Lee's greatest works mm-hmm. ever. But in comparison to, you know, all the movies that were out this year, it certainly deserved a nomination. There's a, I was like, <sighs> so the, my only, like, I don't, and you know, I'm not, I don't, I barely can watch everything. But there, there was some aspects of it where you were like, I was happy to see Viola Davis got nominated. Yes. Chadwick Boseman got nominated. Um, the movie that you just saw, CJ, Judas and the Black Messiah, yes, Judas got, nomi- got, got but, nominated as well. Uh, it, um, but so, okay, that, that, you said it was good, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. but only Daniel got yeah. nominated, and they got nominated for best song. And to the best of my knowledge, that's it. No best film, no best Mm-mm. director, no nothing for Lakeith, nothing for anybody else in that movie. And for me, like I don't. I don't care what an award show yeah. says, but if it affects my money, then you damn right I want to get these awards mm-hmm. and I want to be nominated because we we all see the previews, Golden Globe nominated actor, blah, 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 yeah. in this. And if I can use that to market myself and make more money, then yes, it is it is frustrating to not be recognized for the work mm-hmm. that I do. It's crazy because I feel like right now is, and as you mentioned, CJ, is like, I don't care. And I, and I I know from a standpoint, if you're in Hollywood and that is your, your like, you know, your industry, you do care because you, you want to say Emmy Award winning. You want to say SAG Award. You even want to say SAG nominee. You know, like you, you, they, they, they put that nominated for whatever. I don't care. You know, I think especially at a time like this where we, I know there's so many great stuff out now and I have so many different platforms to watch it on. I don't really care if this is nominated or not nominated. Cause at the end of the day, what we are putting our, you know, our belief in is someone's opinion that one person's opinion even if my show does not get nominated i'm going off of like someone i know jessica that good you know even though you told me to watch a very bad show which i have not forgotten about it was but one show if, when will i live it down? If, <laughs> if it was good you talk to your friends like hey was this good oh girl you gotta watch this this is something that you would totally like or megan you wouldn't like that don't watch that that's all i care about yeah. was that good was it riveting was it a true story did it make me feel did it make give me emotions i don't care what a committee says and says like oh you know in my head the committee i already picture that room and i don't i don't know if they're in a room i picture a room of like very old that zoom call (laughs) right old white people who are just there's no diversity they're not watching anything different they're not going to this streaming platform or watching on this and that's how i picture it could be very different no no uh, megan it is old old white dudes with the bald spot right here (laughs) with the shaggy like gray beards pot bellies and their smoking jackets with their little ascots who decide (laughs) what's going on it's so funny because usually they trend in like a very specific direction too but like meryl streep was left out Mm -hmm. and the prom was always going to be nominated i enjoyed the prom just because i enjoy musicals the prom was terrible the prom was terrible but i can say i like it because i like musicals and it made me feel yeah. good because it took me back to Broadway which I haven't seen a live show since the pandemic so it hits you in the feels there but the only person who was nominated from that was James Corden a straight man playing a gay man a problem in itself but Meryl Streep doesn't get anything Tom Hanks doesn't get nominated Sophia Loren doesn't get nominated those like old stars who the white heads at the Golden Globes the Hollywood foreign press usually trend to they didn't even do it on that one and Judas and the Black Messiah is so interesting to me I can't wait to see it because we watched the trial of the Chicago Seven last night, which I really enjoyed. It's an Aaron Sorkin to a T master of dialogue. It was it was really well done. But those two periods interlapped in 1968, mm-hmm. and to see those stories kind of like go across each other, and the trial of the Chicago Seven primarily focuses on the white experience of that, whereas Judas and the Black Messiah primarily focuses on the Black Panthers and Fred Hampton, and for them to get left out. I'm excited to see both so that like I can see it with my own eyes, but I know people who have seen both see that as yet another glaring situation. I will say Sasha Baron Cohen is one of like the most creative, intelligent, wonderful performers, and I'm rooting for Borat 2 to win everything. He was in Trial of the Chicago 7 too, so he's like fresh on my brain. But. So the, the thing that just where? for chaos sake where? let me say that not okay. because it's like okay. the best was movie was that good? no not because <laughs> well, it, like- it was good it was fascinating um, but just from a oh. sense of like it would be chaos <laughs> if okay. Borat to won anything where racism matters right I, I couldn't care less what you think of me it, it, your thoughts really matter nothing to me but when your thoughts dictate your action and your action prevent me from getting opportunities then we have a problem and Golden Globes is a clear example of that where you want to go out there and hire 
um, award-winning, award-nominated actors, actresses, directors, producers, etc., and you give them all to non-black people. You give them all to white dudes. And then time comes for me as a talented person to come up to you and say, hey, I got this movie pitch. It's like, ah, but you hadn't really done anything in your career. Like, you hadn't been nominated for anything. Mm -hmm. Yo, th this is a really good piece of work. You're being lazy, not going out there and doing the research, and you're using your assumptions about me to prevent me from getting opportunities. So these movie execs, the movie industry will say, hey, we hired this person, insert actor's name here. We hired them because they're award-winning. Well, if you're only giving awards to white people, if you're only nominating white people, then what's the point? Everybody white is going to be able to get good jobs and the black people yeah. are going to have to struggle creatively to find opportunities to give us something different through that black lens. Mm -hmm. I think there I you know, I'm with you. I think I think times are changing where we've gotten or past that. I think the awards the, that that name and that title doesn't hold as much weight anymore because they do know that every year it's a it's a controversial thing of like well how did this person not get nominated but I do think and as you mentioned you see black actors they just have to they have to go a different route you know it could be you know a white actress who's never been nominated but you know she's amazing we're like you know thinking about Jennifer Aniston or like how how long it took to kind of get her out of that friends comedy um, even Sandra Bullock like how long it took but we like but but they don't it's a different route that black actors have to take so usually if we can get that award we do know that that will help my case when i go into um you know a, you know any, any any type of show any type of script more scripts will come to your to your desk it's not just about your look or who you are who you're married to it's really just it's different for it's different for black actors and so that's why the award show i do think that's why it has so much weight mm -hmm. yeah and i think like with the Academy Awards, I mean, when you look at Moonlight winning Best Picture and then last year with Parasite, a South Korean film winning Best Picture. Mm -hmm. And that's a problem in its own right with the Golden Globes is that Minari, which hasn't I haven't seen it yet because it's not out on streaming services, but it's another South Korean film. Well, it's a South Korean family who immigrates to Arkansas. And so it's like 50 50 split. But the Golden Globes have a rule where if you don't speak English for over 50 percent of the movie, mm -hmm. it has to be nominated as a best foreign film as opposed to a best picture. Luckily, with the Academy Awards, that is not the case. But there you have another situation where there's this like you talk about the word systemic racism and systemic institutions and to have if you had Parasite win Best Picture one year and then Minari win Best Picture. I'm not saying Minari is going to win Best Picture. I haven't even seen it. Um, but it is an interesting conversation why things are moving at a different pace in certain award shows, not other award shows. We talked about it with the Grammys when all of that went down. We'll see. Mm -hmm. It is. It, I will say it's really weird because another snub that the editor said was Zendaya. And I know it's, a yes! movie, it's something that we have not we have not seen Malcolm and Marie, but even just for you, you know, Euphoria. But she, they said that it's it's gonna be, it's a snub as well. Um, and she, the editor said she had seen Malcolm and Marie, and she said it's phenomenal. She said I do. She said, I understand that it's going to be. She said I do think some people are not going to like it. It's going to be one of those movies. It's like you love it or you don't. Um, there's going to be some critics, and it might people say it might come out, and people say that it's not good. But she said it is phenomenal, and those are those type of moves where I'm always like, it depends on your preference of what yeah. you like. Sometimes Some, your mood, right? It depends like how you feel going oh, into yeah. watching that sometimes movie. Sometimes I'm really into like a romantic. I just mm -hmm. want something nice, and the, sometimes like when it's the those true those, those those real life true stories, I mm -hmm. sometimes can't hold that weight because I can't watch yeah. it because it's too much emotionally for me to, to process. So I might not, you know have the same reaction but it's mainly because it's too much like it's way too much emotionally for me i'm not there yet for it um so it all it all depends it really does but i will say it's like the first, i feel like there's a lot of shows that haven't came out yet that got nominated mm -hmm. and you're just like that's weird because you're like wait a second like i'm waiting yeah. for february blah 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 date or march whoever date because that not having like, the cutoff thing uh, changes things uh, like under day got nominated for the united states versus billy holiday something that hasn't come out and something that took a spot from mm -hmm. potentially zendaya everyone thought zendaya was going to get nominated because she's again the golden globes is all about hot young stars and money and, and she just won. And Zendaya is one of the hottest young actresses in yeah. the game right now. And she just won the Emmy. So usually yes. like, you look at... But they snubbed her for Euphoria last year. The yeah. Golden Globes did. So anyway, no no huge surprise. And like Nomadland hasn't come out yet. That's one of the um, the movies that's directed by a woman. I can't think of her name off the top of my head. Zhao. 
that's the Frances McDermott movie. Everyone's hyping that up. I'm now convinced that that movie's going to disappoint me because everyone's talked about it for like a year of how mm-hmm. great it is. And now I don't know how people have time. I guess maybe because we're in sports. Like, it's just like, yeah. yo, you, you really got to find, there's so much great stuff coming out. And like you really gotta find the time. That's why we need. We're gonna need an all star break too. I need an all star break just that like twelve day stretch. Just like Dylan Caught Brooks up said. On so much. D- well, Dylan Brooks said he's like during the well the unprecedented break yes. when they had to be quarantined. He watched you know the trilogy of Lord of the Rings. And he's like I, I finally got I Wait, finally I got a that. chance to get really into it. I don't want to watch Lord of the Rings, but there's a lot of stuff that <laughs> not, I will not be number one quick. on my list. By the way, Lord of the Rings is coming to IMAX, so you're gonna be able to is see the really? trilogy in IMAX studios. Yeah, CJ, IMAX studios, did you IMAX see the studios. Meg? I did not see the Meg. I remember the commercials for the I Meg too. and the posters it was on for the t- Meg. We, we watched the Meg oh, last night God a little bless before, you. before we watched well, the trial like, of the Chicago you 7. You came in here earlier today. Yes. And said you took in, like, whatever, a couple NBA games. No, no, no. I said I took Meg. in a couple minutes of the okay, Pacers. You watched that. Game. You watched the Chicago. We watched the last half of the Meg, and then we watched the trial of the Chicago 7. To How bad is that? When you go home. The Meg is so bad. I, I love TV and movies, oh. so that's how. We also watched two episodes of Pen15 in the afternoon, and I, I still took a two-hour nap. I can't even. I need to. I need what to, do you do when you go home? I don't you? know. Apparently nothing. I have no idea. I mean, if you, if, Megan, honestly, look into my eyes. Look into my eyes. If you would stop going to Costco every damn day, you <laughs> might have time to watch the movies, dog. Touché. No, Megan probably has a better life. She lives Touché. with her family. I she do. communicates with people. Chris I, and I are like, what are we watching tonight? You're right. You're right. I will say I'm in a, I'm in a, a big, a big uh, household of people. Yeah. So it's like there's times where you're just you're talking to each other. There's times you're cleaning up, talking about what you're going to eat. But you're right. Costco probably does take how, a lot And of how much damn talking are y'all doing as a family? You know. Gordon, these, my wife comes in and we don't speak to one another. We barely look. She we just comes in and beelines for the couch. To force ourselves. We went on a phoneless walk. So we were oh, very busy yesterday. Best. Wait, so you walked? We walked. Watched yeah. half of the Megalodon, <laughs> watched the Chicago 7, and some basketball. Uh, you know what I did and yesterday? And I made Chris I give me a back massage because it was National Women and Girls in Sports Day. What? I really milked all of this to my advantage yesterday. <laughs> it was it was a good day. Um, I will say, Trials of Chicago 7 really like screwed me over, though, because... Can I say that on the show? I don't know. Um, I just did. But my parents are going to be mad at me. Uh, it was way longer than we expected. Mm. So I was up until uh, my goal had been to be in bed last night with no Grizzlies game. I know it's a hard stretch. I was like, I'm going to be in bed by 10. It went till 11. Oh, so. geez. But it was great. It, uh-huh. it was riveting. I was so asleep worth it. by 8.30. I will say. See, I, you did it right. Yesterday <laughs> the sun came out. That's so we the sun came out. So I spent some time outside. I had dyers yesterday. I had their, cat, I had their catfish. Ooh. It was good. It was really good. You spent some time outside. It was just like a day where you just don't want to like, the sun don't come out that often. No, we were so excited. I walked backwards on our walk home just so I could see the sun setting over the Saturday. Arkansas bridge. Saturday is the day the sun's coming out. Well, we have so you know. It's my birthday. Oh, oh, oh gosh. Oh. CJ. <laughs> oh, I cannot wait till February 7th. <laughs> oh, no, no. I'm celebrating on February okay, 7th. Okay, I can't wait till February 8th. But then February 8th, we'll all be together. So we will celebrate you on February 8th. Oh, it's okay. You know, uh, okay. I don't know if it's going to be up to your standards because I no, feel yeah. as if like I feel as if CJ and I might not do the best. I know you're not really a big celebrated person. No, I, mean, I celebrate not other people. Y'all got it. Oh, I don't. I really okay. don't need a celebration. My celebration's on the inside. Don't. That's one of those you know. You that's know. One of, that's you one know what it is. You know I don't, gift, I don't need. I don't need a celebration at all. Please don't do anything for me. And then she shows up with the, with like a full outfit on. Like, oh. oh. <laughs> Best outfit of the day. You better wear a I should have rented, rented something. I should have rented like a sequin dress. Yeah. Anything. Can we get a double tap or not? Or just something? Sure. Let's save the other ones for yeah. tomorrow. We got a meeting that I need to get home before we get oh, to that yeah. meeting. All right. All right. So I teased us earlier that Michael, uh, the Michael B. Jordan it is the Super Bowl commercial with Alexa. Oh, it's so good. Check this out. It's just flawless, isn't it? I think so. Yeah. I mean, I literally couldn't imagine a more beautiful vessel for Alexa to be inside. Alexa, how many tablespoons are in a cup? There are 16 tablespoons in a cup. Babe, food just got here. Why are you cooking? Who's that? Alexa, turn on the sprinklers. Honey, I already ran the sprinklers. <laughs> Things are getting way too wet around here. Alexa, dim the lights. But I'll save you Alexa, lights up! Alexa, lights up! Add bath oil to my shopping list. Alexa, no, don't do that. Read my audiobook. I was in his hands. I was being changed. Yeah. <sighs> I realized that I was 
also kissing you. Honey, other people have to use the bathroom around here too. <laughs> <laughs> the husband makes this commercial. I mean, I love Michael B. Jordan. It makes this commercial to a T. He's an amazing, I don't know who that is, but he's an amazing. I hope they continue to use this couple for it. It's so I, funny. The, I think that, that they came out with it. It's perfect. I do think it's going to be an announcement later that Michael B. Jordan is going to be the, be the voice of an Alexa. So just like John <gasps> Legend was, that, that's what I got from it. No? Yeah, that makes sense. Who else would you be there? It's all I don't about, even it's have all an about Alexa. His, oh, thank goodness I have an Alexa. I might buy too. an Alexa for that. Because John Legend is no longer one. Google. You don't what? I'll definitely buy one. <laughs> for you oh, or for Corey? Me out. For me? What you mean? <laughs> she could get her own. I want that fine piece of man meat reading stuff to me, damn it. Like, what's the weather? Like, that. I don't even think about Michael B. Jordan having, like, a sexy voice ever. Like, no, in that, in now that, I do. In that sense. Like, John, <laughs> John Legend, I had him be my Google voice, and now that, that contract is over. Um, but he was a Google voice for about two years, and it was amazing. He, oh, he would, if you said sing me a song, it would just be a random song that he would sing. So I do think that Alexa's now trying to get into that game. And so of all people, I was just shocked that Michael B. Jordan's voice. But then when you hear that commercial, you say, okay, I like that voice. I will change my Alexa to Michael B. Jordan now. So that's what I think. I could be good. very wrong, but like, why would you? Yeah. Why else would you do that? It would make sense. Mm -hmm. All right, something else we saw yesterday. Kourtney Kardashian made people mad oh. because of the emojis <laughs> that she used. Take a look. Or Chloe, it was Chloe Kardashian. Yeah. Excuse me, got the got the Kardashians mixed up in this case. But Chloe Kardashian uses the, um, it's the, okay, the face palm emoji. The, yeah, the face palm emoji, but it's the skin tone. It's the skin tone, but at the same time, it's the only brunette. Mm -hmm. What do we think? I'm serious. Uh, well, I, I'm actually okay, very so curious. A couple we of have, things. Yes, okay. okay. Um, Chloe popped up on the TV, and I asked my wife. Like, yo, who is that? She's like, that's Khloe Kardashian. And that's been so long that since I've seen her, I didn't recognize her. One. Two, <laughs> this is for, for somebody like you, JB, okay, we, we might be willing to let this slide. But they are, they as a family are habitual appropriators. That is what they do. And so mm -hmm. this is, if it's somebody else, fine, they, they want to be a brunette. But for them and that family, they, they appropriate hairstyles, they appropriate lips, they appropriate their, their gluteus maximuses, they appropriate everything. So this is just <laughs> another <laughs> example. I didn't want to say that children are watching now, Megan. Yeah, I can't okay. be swearing with the kids right. watching. Um, this is just another example to me of, of them appropriating culture. That's, that's just what they do, though. They're a bunch of culture vultures. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 God. <laughs> Can you do that again for me, please? Go, go! He could be with Moira, oh, Rose, geez. and the birds. That's, that's, what, Crows, it sounded like. that's what it sounded like. <laughs> um, I'm with you. When I saw, because she was she was trending on Twitter last night, and I was like, what I mean, what did Chloe do now? And then, <laughs> I, saw, do now? And then I saw it, and I was like, oh. And pe a lot of people, their responses were good. You know, just like, uh, you mean this emoji? Or, you know, it was some funny gifts that they used for her. I mean, she kept it up and, like, even posted a picture later saying, like, the shade is real with her, like, the shit, you know, the shade. I'm with CJ on this because I think because of who it is and like what, you know, that is probably why I was just kind of like taken back. Like, come on. Um, I think Apple should just add another. That's I a think it brings up a good that, conversation. That's a conversation that needs to happen because it's all about not just the brunette. It's about the skin tone. Yes. thing. And, you know, I am all for if you want, because I actually know friends who I have some friends who only use like and it's not just like the, the, you don't have to do the, the right exact skin tone. I have friends who use. Um, the brown and black skin tones who aren't black and brown. I have I always had a thing with them. Like, Ew. what are you trying to do? I don't understand it. So that was just like a moment. Where was like, I don't get this. And because they are, I don't understand that family as, as much. a whole. Yeah. <laughs> so that was I, I was taking a taking it back. But yes, Apple make one for those purposes. So then and she can't use that as an excuse, or people right. can't use that as an excuse and be like, oh, well, I don't have blonde hair and I don't have black hair, so... But the hair the changes, other. like, every every darn week for them, so they, exactly. they have, so, like, to me, it's just, Is like, you Is there not a ginger emoji? I don't... What? See, I only look a at ginger my... ginger emoji. I don't, truthfully, I only look at like, our skin tones. Red-headed. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> I apologize. I Chris and I think that we'll have ginger babies. Redhead. Red. You're supposed to say redhead. Come on. We man. have a lot of redheads in my yeah, family. Okay. I'm go. sorry. I apologize. <laughs> but I, you know, I had never really looked at the emoji <laughs> thing before. I do not mean any harm. I there love. There is a well. She could have done some, red hair. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm looking at the emojis. No. She could have done something else with yeah, it. Yeah. She absolutely could have done something yeah, else. Like, I don't even have to look at them. 
to know she could have done something else. She did that on yeah. purpose. Yeah. And now yeah. we're talking about it. And now she was trending on Twitter. Someone else that was trending yesterday <laughs> was uh, Chrissy T- uh, Teigen. Chrissy Teigen was trending for other purposes. So she had asked everyone, what's the most expensive thing you've eaten that you thought sucked? She responded, say, one time John and I were at a restaurant and a waiter recommended a nice cabernet. We got the bill and it was thirteen thousand dollars how do you casually recommend that wine we didn't even finish it and it had and had it been cleared so a lot of people tweeted at her and said that you know like how could you do this it's like times that we're going through it's not relatable and then she responded hey not everything i'm saying on twitter is going to be relatable to you because it is my life and my twitter and my stories i see your tweets i get your jokes you are so funny yes you really nailed me um she went on to say she said she was having a really rough day because this week is the week that yeah. her baby jack was supposed to be uh, born so she's very anxious. She's also having surgery today now for her endometriosis. So maybe just maybe it was just like so much, but she thought Twitter would just kind of like have someone to talk to. When I saw the $13,000 wine tweet, I didn't take it as like non-relatable. I took it as more funny and also like, dang, who just casually, you know, like what would you do if someone, you know, that you ask like, oh, what should I get? And I do that too sometimes like, oh, waiter, like what's the best thing on the menu? And like, oh, and I'm, and I always say, they always are going to tell you the most yep. expensive thing. And then when you get that check, you're like, what the, like, I need to look like I do a double check, but a $13,000 wine, you can't return that once you, <laughs> once you crack it open. <laughs> she said they didn't even finish it. Yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, $13,000 for a bottle of wine. Like, I'd be mad if it was like a hundred dollar bottle of wine at that point. If you ask for the best thing, I mean, okay, even if say, put yourself in like the super rich category and you drink really, really expensive wine, 13, is thirteen thousand dollars not absurd? Like I would think of, you I, know, I think no, even for not. their level, it's not really. I no. think for their we, level, it's too much money. We have no concept of how much a lot of numbers is. Like truthfully, so if you're making Beyonce, Jay Z type money. For 13, wine, thirteen thousand dollars for wine is like going to the store and buying a two liter of Fagos for a dollar twenty five for them. No, like it that, is that's not. what it is. Think about it though. You're sitting down for like a random Monday night dinner. It's not an anniversary. It's not you know a wedding night. You're just going to dinner. Hey, what's the best wine that you get? I'm with her. Like who just casually recommends that? Yeah. And I like that she shared it. I think it made for a funny story. It made me think about what's the like weirdest thing that I've gotten that really was awful. Did and you have an answer? Mm, probably someone's french fries to be honest with you i get so upset when i ask you do you have good french fries yes i say are they crunchy oh they're very crunchy Mm -hmm. happened unfortunately yesterday dyer's french fries were not the best cup of tea in carryville wow yeah but you you, but they weren't you know thirteen thousand dollars i'm mad for five dollars i'm like i spent five bucks on these fries hop dotties sometimes if you get them on the wrong experience don't get me started and their fries are expensive and their fries can be so like shout out hop so Dottie good. if you want to give us french fries i love you get their sweet potato yes, fries though, right so good. i love their parmesan tossed fries mm-hmm. oh, i want some right now okay let's hustle up and get out of here yeah. and get french fries and be on with the day because it is a grizzlies game day it is a late grizzlies game so day there's no gritty huh no we we're gonna save it for it. tomorrow we saved it is for that okay tomorrow. for you along with morgan whalen I mean, okay, yeah, sure. Fine. Tomorrow's Friday. Fine. I did the quick math. If I'm an average quarterback making $25 million <laughs> a year and I want a 13000 bottle of wine, it's going to run me 0.5% of my salary. So, yeah, like, it's it's fine for them. They, they live a different life than we do. TJ, I still think it's a lot of money. I, I think they're still shocked. Like, you're still like, what the? $1,000 is fine. Thirteen? Yeah. That's a car. Not for them. Not it's for not. Them. I know for not for not them, but you could have you could have go given world. someone a car. You can go give somebody a car. Oh, uh, whatever. All right, what are we watching tonight? We got the Grizzlies at eight o'clock taking on the Houston Rockets right here. Why does it say nine o'clock? It's eight, right? It's eight o'clock. Oh please. gosh. Please. <laughs> oh, I got really scared. <laughs> Disregard. It is eight o'clock. Pre-game no, because shows I, did the, I did the wrong time on our uh, our update. Seven thirty. Oh, Robbie, you threw me off. I just said eight thirty. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness, that scared me. Made me really nervous. Well, that's what that's what we'll be doing. Let's be honest. Yeah, I won't watch any movies tonight. So yeah, <laughs> just that. I will be doing the show from home. So I appreciate you guys allowing me not to uh, drive down here. See you from the Zoom or the so, Skype. But I'll still be here. Can't wait. But just, so don't. No one message me saying, "Are you okay? I'm good. We're just. I know you're there. It's a late game. I get that every time I do the show from home. Oh really? Is everyone okay? Because oh, the yeah. times we live in. Yeah, I know. Yeah. All right. We will see you tomorrow. We'll have all the latest from what happened tonight between the Grizzlies and the Rockets. Have a great Thursday. 
This has been Rise and Grind with Jessica and Megan. Tune in live daily at 8 a.m. or on demand by heading to GrindCityMedia.com or GrindCityMedia on YouTube.